Welcome back to Project Electrolyte. This is the rear suspension episode of the 1972 Plymouth Satellite Tesla swap. Last episode, I was able to mount the Tesla Model S subframe into the rear of this car. I've got everything secure, uh, except for there was no suspension. The problem with this build is there's no room for coilovers under the car, so drop the motor out one more time and uh, we're going to start building a pushrod suspension. First I had to figure out where the pushrods will go through the floor. This is underneath the car right next to the frame and the uh, wheel well. I've got a hole drilled on either side. And now um, one of my favorite things, turning cardboard into metal. I've got a cardboard template here and I've got it transferred over to Fusion 360 in order to plasma cut out some brackets. And here's where they're going to push through the floor. So the frame of the car uh, is where I'll weld these brackets, but they have to extend through the floor of the car. So here, you are, here they are in place. Uh, half that bracket is actually pushed up into the trunk, so I've got them clamped into place here along with a crossbar, so I make sure they're uh, lined up exactly, and uh, I'll be able to have a support on the bottom as well as the top. So here's the brackets pushed through the uh, floor of the trunk. These will ev eventually be welded into place uh, in the floor as well as the frame. So starting with the frame, I've got them welded on either side. I'll also include some extra support since this is what uh, holds the car up. And this is that crossbar on the top side. This crossbar is what's going to have the pivot points for the bell crank as well as the uh, shock mounts. Starting with a cardboard bell crank and a nice screwdriver pivot. I started to figure out the size and the alignment of the uh, bell cranks. And then I cut out some thin sheet metal uh, bell cranks just to test, as well as a, a thin sheet metal uh, push rod. The square tube across the, the other side is actually a, uh, a sleeve tube. So as I move my suspension throughout its uh, range of motion, that sleeve tube acts just like the coilover will. So you can see as I'm um, showing the movement here, it just uh, gives me a good idea of where the coilover should mount. Next thing is to do it with actual wheels and tires to make sure I have full clearance. So here's the wheels. I've decided on there a 20 by 10 American Racing. Looks pretty tight. This is a, a high positive offset wheel to make enough clearance for this uh, Tesla subframe. So with that fender lip there, it looked like I needed to roll it. So here it is rolled. Used my buddy's tool from Eastwood and it's, uh, you mount it to the hub of the car and you just roll it back and forth, heating up the paint so you don't crack it and got it folded in and now it just tucks in real nice. This is almost full squat. It could probably go a little bit lower, but the uh, lift arms were on the ground at this point. And if you look real close, the, uh, the lower control arm has an up angle there. Ride height will actually have a slight down angle. Um, as the, the suspension travels up, it actually goes negative camber at the top. So here's my pivot I decided to use. These are wheelbarrow uh, bearings. They have a nice little lip and a three-quarter inch hole in the center. Nice strong bolt. And uh, here's some sheet metal uh, bell cranks I made. It's a stack of three sheets. And they go right up against that lip of the bearing. And then it's bolted together here. I've got couple ears with a spacer in between and a big three-quarter inch bolt holding everything together. Those bearings are bolted right to that ear and then that's kind of the general shape of the bell crank that I'm thinking. I might make some adjustments when I get the coilovers but I think this will clear everything I need. Once I had it all figured out as far as spacing I've got these ears welded to that crossbar now. There's a set of ears on either end and then back in the car, that's about where it's going to be. You can see the push rod on the left there with the, uh, the heim joint. That's what's going to actually move the bell crank and compress the coil springs. So this looks like the uh, about where ride height is going to be, kind of a neutral position on the bell crank. There again is that sleeve tube I was using in place of a uh, coilover. Now this is full um, droop, so uh, you can see the where the shock will be is fully extended. It kind of has a bump stop at the bottom. And then this is more uh, on the compression side. Now this, this looks like ride height again, kind of a, a neutral area. And then under full compression, you can see how short that tube is now. So the push rod is long and the, the shock side is, is short. So that's kind of the idea of the cantilever suspension. 
Here's a closer look at the bearings with the spacer. So these bearings are actually bolted straight to the ears, nice and secure, and the lip is on the inside. This way I just slip the bell crank right over the edge of it, and then uh, when I bolt these to the shock and to the push rod, it holds them securely into place. And I might end up having, adding one more bolt in the middle. With everything figured out, I've got the, uh, the tabs welded to the floor now, so this kind of adds um, like a unibody car does, just add, everything adds strength. So it's welded to the floor as well as to the frame, and I'll have a cross me member top and bottom. It's going to be super solid. This is a removable upper crossbar. It's got the shock mounts in the middle, the tabs for the bell cranks on the end, and it's just uh, held in with the four bolts. Here it is in place, all painted up, bearings mounted. And my little electrolyte logo in the middle, it's uh, kind of a cross between the Tesla T and the bumper of the, the car. This is what the push rod looks like from underneath. You can see it pushing through that hole. And uh, that's all you'll see from underneath the car. While I'm waiting on uh, coilovers and front suspension, I started working on my headlights. I'm using a five and three quarter motorcycle he headlight. These are LEDs. They've got a little running light bar right across the middle. The nice thing about that is it gives you a good separation between low beam and high beam. Some of these LED lights, you, it kind of bleeds. And you don't really have a good definition between low and high. So trying to mount these, I, they don't fit in the original buckets because they don't have the, the nice tapered back. So I tried to cut the buckets. It just didn't work. They got too thin. They're just a stamp sheet metal. So I started making my own buckets. These four were close, but not quite. It took me five tries to get this right. You can see how wide this the back of the headlight is. It's just a square, so had to get these to fit, but then still mount into the car. So here's my bucket on the right next to the factory bucket. Um, I've got it to hold down with the original spring as well as the upper and side adjusters, so all the adjustments and, and position will be just like factory and there's a, a grill piece that covers all this. There it is into place, the new headlight on the inside. Once I had it figured out, I went ahead and cut the rest of the buckets uh, for the other three lights. I have to bend these tabs back and then forward again and drill them and a um, little bit of work. Since I have four headlights with high and low beam, I thought the inside ones should be fog lights, so I painted them amber with this uh, clear stained glass paint from Krylon I saw people using online. I just peeled the plastic off, shot it right inside the box. It was all, it was like it was masked off for me. It, it dries just crystal clear, gives a nice amber color. And um, I fired these up with a power supply and I really like the light. I'll be able to adjust the fog lights for the best position and the headlights, et cetera. So kind of a neat look. I like this uh, two-tone kind of look I've seen people do before. I also got my heater core done. This is the original uh, liquid heater core, but now I'm going to run an electric heater core out of a uh, smart car. I got this from Stealth EV. This is what they use in their builds. And so I cut out my heater core. You can even see the remaining tank on the left side there. Replaced it with the electric element. And here it is back in the box. It fits perfect. All the doors still work, and it's going to be a nice uh, HVAC system. The rest of the interior took some disassembly. This is most of the dash components kind of in a pile here. I'm figuring out what wiring I'm going to keep and discard. And um, I've got the dash completely removed so I can get all of the old insulation out and um, repaint everything and get ready for wiring. I'm changing the color. This was a brown car inside and outside. So here's the original brown color. This is one of the dash pieces. So I've got it all wet sanded and I'm going to shoot it black. Uh, along with all the other metal pieces. Here's the, the main part of the dash in black. It's almost a, a charcoal, but it'll go really nice with the, uh, the black vinyl interior. And then I started to look at the wiring. This is the uh, Race Pack Smart Wire Kit. It's a um, power distribution module that uh, does all the fuses and relays, which I'll do a whole other video on this, as well as my uh, universal mount. Uh, this is a universal steering column that I wanted to mount factory, so I'll have a video coming up on this as well. Thanks for following my project. Please subscribe, ring the bell if you'd like notifications when I make a new video, and we'll see you next time.